Hi kids and Merry Christmas. Today we are going to draw the nativity scene together. So you got a little bag, go ahead and take your crayons and your paper out of that bag and get ready to draw. While you're getting your crayons and your paper together, let's talk about the nativity scene. What is the nativity scene? The nativity scene is the place where Jesus was born. We're gonna start with a stable, but this stable that Jesus was born in was no ordinary stable. Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, they traveled from their hometown Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem where this stable was. Can you guess how long that journey was? It was 70 miles, so long. Let's go ahead and draw baby Jesus in the manger. And what is a manger? A manger is just another word for a little box or a feeding trough that people put hay in for animals to eat. Because imagine if Jesus was born in a stable, he wouldn't have had a nice, cozy, cushy, soft mattress to sleep on. No, he would have had a manger. Imagine that, might have been a little itchy with all that hay. But we still need to add some more things. So let's do the Christmas star. This one's so special. The Christmas star is also known as the star of Bethlehem. And this star stands for kingship. And Jesus is our king. This star is also so special because it's what led the three wise men to come and worship Jesus after he was born. Okay, looking great. Your drawings are awesome, but I think we definitely need to add Jesus's parents. Their names were Mary and Joseph. And here's a really fun fact. Joseph had an angel come to him in a dream and tell him that Jesus was going to save people from their sins. And what did that mean? The angel was saying that Jesus was going to be king of the world. The angel also told Joseph in that dream that Jesus was going to be called Emmanuel. Say that, Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? It means God with us. How awesome is that? God is with us and we are never alone. Look at that, what a special scene to imagine. That's awesome. Okay, but we're not quite done. Remember, if Jesus was born in a stable, there were probably some animals in that stable. So I wanna start with a donkey. And why a donkey? Do you remember that Joseph and Mary traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem to get to this stable? And do you remember how long that journey was? 70 miles? Mary rode 70 miles on a donkey and Joseph guided and led that donkey the whole way. Again, imagine your longest road trip and now imagine doing it on a donkey. Whoa, okay, perfect. I love it. You guys are amazing artists. This is awesome. But we have some empty space on this side. So let's add one more animal. How about a sheep? Did you know that Jesus is often referred to as our good shepherd? This just means that Jesus guides for us and cares for us our whole life, the same way that a shepherd guides and cares for their sheep. Think about that. Jesus loves you and cares for you. And there we have our nativity scene. Isn't it awesome to visualize and imagine where Jesus was born. Thanks again for joining me today. I had so much fun with you and I hope that you have a Merry Christmas. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her receive her King.
Jesus, everybody. Welcome to CCV. I want to invite you to worship Jesus with us. And let's celebrate this. Sing this. Come on. But He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glory. Christmas, everybody. We're so glad that you've joined us to be able to celebrate Jesus coming to this earth together. And for all the kids that are in the room, we are so glad that you have come with your mom and dad and that you're going to sing with us or with your grandma or with your grandpa. We're so glad that you're here. We're also so glad that I know that you've been obedient already tonight, today. I know that you've been obedient. Whenever they said it's time to put your socks and shoes on because we're going to church, I know you guys did it the first time. They didn't even have to repeat themselves. I know you're ready to be obedient throughout this service and just cut them a little bit of slack because they need you to, they want you to. How many of you guys were able to draw with hope before, before the service started? Did any of you guys doodle and, and draw the manger scene together? Why don't you guys grab those drawings and hold them up? I would love to see your artwork right now in this all. Oh, look at all those drawings, man. Yeah. There's. We got a couple adults holding up papers. That was a kid's activity. That wasn't an adult thing. Let's leave the kid's activities to the kids. We are so excited to join together as a family and to celebrate that God in all of his infinite wonder would choose to save the world of sin by sending his son Jesus as a baby fully human and fully God. And we wanna invite you to join us today, to lean in and be present with us. We wanna invite you to sing with us. We wanna invite you to laugh with us. We wanna invite you to remember and to celebrate that God loves you and he sees you and he's for you and he sent his son to prove it. The journey to the cross begins with the manger. And together as a family, we circle around the manger and the memory of it today. And we thank God for what it is that he has done. I can't think of anything better to celebrate than that. So what we wanna do before we get going with our service any further is invite you to turn around to a few people around you and just wish them a Merry Christmas.
Every year, we celebrate the greatest story ever told, the story of Christmas, the story of Jesus entering into our world. And this year, we thought it'd be fun if we asked some of our CCB kids to help us tell the story of Christmas, or rather, draw the story. Let's see what they come up with. All right, in our Christmas story, there is a baby. Do you want to draw us a baby? Yeah. Okay, I believe in you. Would you be willing to draw an angel for us? Okay. Can you guys draw a big city for us? Okay, you're going to help us draw an awesome road. Or it can make the ocean, too. Can you draw our pregnant lady for us? Yes. You know what I'm making? My what you, dog. Your dog? Some fancy men. A bed that a baby can sleep in. So would you like to draw a camel? Mm -hmm. And you want to draw a donkey? What animal is that? It's a giraffe. Oh, of course. Oh, nice. That's a, that's a tall hill. You gonna, you gonna hike that? Yeah. Wind. Wind, you need wind. Whoa, was that a donkey? Oh, what are these? Cool. Yes, I'm so cool. That donkey's got some big donkeys. ears. That's awesome. Oh, are you? Oh, I want to see this. It just concerns me how tall these guys are compared to that tree. It's like they're <laughs> giants. And the eyes, baby's got to see, nice smiley face. It's oh, look at those ears. It like an alligator. It does, kind of. Maybe you just invented an alligator-tiger hybrid. It's a star. Okay, you're great at drawing stars. I'm also, I'm just very curious what's in these very, very tall gifts. This is a, a big vacuum cleaner. Pregnant with an elf on her, on the shirt. Oh, more math. In a little town called Nazareth, there was a kind young woman named Mary. She was going to marry a man named Joseph. One day, an angel named Gabriel appeared to her and told her she was going to have a special baby named Jesus. Mary was surprised since she was not yet married. The angel also talked to Joseph and told him not to worry. He explained that the baby was a special gift from God and Joseph should take Mary as his wife. So, Mary and Joseph felt happy and knew that something amazing was going to happen with their baby Jesus. The ruler of the land wanted to count all the people, so Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. It was a very long journey, and when they arrived, there was no room for them in the inns. They found a cozy stable, and that's where Mary gave birth to baby Jesus. She wrapped him in soft blankets and laid him in a manger, which is like a special bed for animals. In the fields nearby, some shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly, angels appeared in the sky, singing and saying, don't be afraid. We bring good news. In Bethlehem, a baby was born. He is the savior, Jesus. The shepherds hurried to Bethlehem and found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, just like the angels had said. They were so happy and told everyone about the special baby. Far away, wise men saw a bright star in the sky. They knew it meant a new king was born, so they followed it to Bethlehem. The star led them to where Jesus was, and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But there was a mean king who wanted to hurt baby Jesus. An angel warned Joseph in a dream, so they quickly left for Egypt to keep Jesus safe. When it was safe to go back, they returned to their home in Nazareth. And so, in the little town of Bethlehem, a baby named Jesus was born. He was the Messiah, the Savior the world had been waiting for. That's why we celebrate Christmas, to remember the joy and hope that came into the world with the birth of Jesus. Come. 
for the first time or maybe for the thousandth time would you join us as we remember that silent night let's sing together Merry Christmas, happy holidays, season's greetings. How do you feel when you hear these phrases? You might feel warmth, peace, or joy. Feelings that remind you of the season that we are in. A time to gather together to celebrate the hope of the world. Jesus is the reason for this season. But what do we do when the season is over? When the story of Christmas ends and we wait for the story of Easter, when the lights are taken down, 
The holiday decor goes into storage and we put away the nativity sets. Do we put Jesus in those same boxes, storing him away until next year? Does Jesus become just another dusty box on the shelf? Where is he between the seasons? Jesus tells us, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus said he will be with us, that he is with us. The seasons may change, but he stays the same. He is the hope that we carry in all seasons. Jesus is more than a holiday. He's more than a historical figure or moral teacher. Jesus is more than a story in a book. He's more than a name. He's more than a slogan or a catchphrase. Jesus is more than a day in December.
May this be our song for more than a season. We can know the fire. We can know the reason. The light has come, burning within us. Here is our hope. He is King Jesus. He is our hope. He is King Jesus. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's so good to see you. And if you happen to be new to CCB, I just want to say we are crazy honored that you would be with us this Christmas. But for all of us, I want to talk to you for just a few minutes about how you can make Jesus more than just a day in December. I mean, it is true, right, that when we come to this month, the whole month of December, we're, we're kind of just focused on one day. And the question that seems to dominate our thinking throughout this whole entire month is a question we ask each other and we think about, which is what? What do you want for Christmas? It's not a bad question, but I think there's probably two types of responses, two types of people in this world. There's people that say, just give me something I need. And then other people say, forget that, I want something I want. I've been asking people this question all week long, so I thought I'd just ask everyone on all of our campuses, you can vote with your hands. How many of you would say, I'm the type of person that says, for Christmas, just give me something I need. Anybody out there, just give me something I need? Okay. Uh, how about those of you that say, eh, give me something I want. Got it. I asked uh, one woman on our staff, I said, well, what are you? And she said, oh, give me something I want. I said, that's awesome. Uh, what'd you get your husband for Christmas? Something he needs. I was like, okay, I see, I see how it is. I'll give you a little insight into my marriage with, with Jamie, my wife. Uh, she's very much, give me something I need, and I am very much, forget that, give me something I want. And these are really different things, right? Like, I brought some gifts today that I thought I'd test you out with. You tell me if these are a need or a want. And the first one is gold toe socks, okay? These are nice socks. Uh, are socks a want or a need? It's pretty much a need, right? And, and my Aunt Francine, every Christmas, got me socks. Thank you, Aunt Francine. Some of you are getting socks for Christmas. Congratulations. All right. Uh, kids, I'll have you play along with this one. Uh, Star Wars Lego set. Want or a need? Squarely a want. Some of you, some of you want this. Uh, how about the nose hole trimmer, okay? <laughs> want or a need? Some of you need this, all right? Uh, some of you need this. Now, this next one, I just want the ladies to play along. Guys, you can be quiet. Ladies, the new Ping G430 driver. This is an unbelievable driver, by the way. Uh, ladies, is this a want or a need? I hear a lot of wants. You're dead wrong, okay? This is absolutely a need because I've seen some of your husbands hit golf balls, and how on earth is he supposed to improve his driving distance without the right equipment? This is absolutely a need, all right? Some of you just judged my golf swing. How dare you, all right? Uh, uh, guys, you're welcome. Uh, so this next one, I got permission to share from my wife, Jamie. This was one of my actual gifts, Christmas of 2020. My wife got me a digital weight scale. Yeah. Now I'm going to show you a picture of my face when I got this weight scale. And essentially what I'm asking is, are you saying I need this? Is this what you're saying? Now, to her credit, she's a great gift giver. And I think I was hinting that I wanted to get in shape the next year or something. But I would just like to ask today, could you imagine if the situation was reversed? <laughs> yeah, you know exactly what I'm saying. I'm just saying, all right? Let me, let me come back to the question, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want? 
Now, this is a question that dominates our thinking all throughout December, and I want to suggest today, maybe it's the wrong question. Because can I just remind all of us, it's not your birthday on December 25th. Now, I wrote that in my notes, and I realized it probably is a few people's birthday on December 25th on our campuses. So I did a little research this week, and this isn't everybody, but I would just like to say to Morgan and Anthem, Jacob and Chandler, Bradley and Peoria, and Brody and Surprise, it is your birthday on December 25th. Happy birthday. But for the rest of us, it's not your birthday, all right? <laughs> it's not our birthday. Kids, whose birthday do we celebrate on Christmas? I love hearing that, that, that noise across all of our campuses. It's Jesus' birthday. So maybe, just maybe, we should be asking a different question, which is this. What does Jesus want for Christmas? You ever thought about that? I, I challenge you to just maybe answer this question. What does Jesus want for Christmas? And the answer is really interesting. Jesus only wants one thing for Christmas. Do you know what it is? It's you. Cue the Mariah Carey music, all right? <laughs> he wants you. And let me be more specific. I would suggest what Jesus wants for Christmas is your worship. Now, when I say the word worship, some of you think, I don't worship anything, right? Because you think worship is for religious people. I'm not really religious, so I don't really worship. And I wanna tell you, you're wrong. Every single person on planet Earth worships. Did you know that? Let me, let me just show you what the word worship actually means and it'll become more clear. Worship comes from the old English word worth-ship. Worth-ship, as some people would say, that actually just means to give something your worth or value. And did you know you were designed to worship? You were designed to find your worth and value in something or someone, and that means every single one of us worships. We find our worth and value somewhere. The only question is, is it the right place? And this world throws so many things at you that you can worship. It throws money, or a career, or your kids, or a hobby, or a sport. You understand when you show up to a stadium full of people cheering on your favorite sports team, do you know there's a little piece of you that's worshiping? You're placing worth or value in that team with other people. And by the way, some of you place way too much worth or value because if they lose, it ruins your whole week. You show up to your kids' events. There's a part of you that's worshiping. You're placing your worth or value in your kids. and not, It's not all bad when you stay late at work. When you try to get that promotion or get that raise, there's a part of you that's, that's revealing where you place your worth and value. Every single one of us worships. Where a lot of us place our worth and value, honestly, is in a relationship. If we, if we just had that boyfriend or the girlfriend or if our marriage was what we wanted it to be. For those of you that have binge watched Hallmark Christmas movies all month long, you know who you are. That's a sign that you're placing your worth or value somewhere. I'm here this Christmas to remind you there is only one place that you can truly find worth and value in this world and in your life. And there's only one person that can give you not only what you want, but what you actually need. And his name is Jesus. And when you understand who Jesus is, truly, that he is the son of God, sent to this earth to show us who God is, to live a perfect life, to die on a cross for our sins, and to rise again on the third day to conquer death and to transform our lives if we would simply place our worth and value and center our lives on him. When you understand who Jesus is, the only response is to place your worth and value with him, to worship him. Let me take you to the first Christmas. When Jesus is born and the angels appear, what's the first thing the angels do? They worship. When the shepherds hear about who Jesus is, they go and worship. And when the wise men travel from a far off country 
In Matthew chapter 2, verse 11, it says this about them. It says, on coming to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and said out loud with me, all of you. And they what? They worshiped. To give Jesus first place in your life, to place your value and worth, your worship, with him and him alone, would that describe you? And the honest answer for many of us today is this, no, it just doesn't. Or you know, maybe there was a time that you would say, there was a time that I, I was really trying to worship Jesus and place my worth and value there, but I, I fell away. Or life got complicated, or I got mad at God because I felt disappointed in life, or, or maybe I felt some shame and thought God was disappointed in me, so I just, I stopped worshiping. And I'm just here today to tell you that God's calling some of you to come back to the only place you'll find your worth and your value. Some of us would just be honest today, and you're only as good as you are honest, and say, hey, this is the first time in a long time you've even been inside of a church. Is that fair? Like some of you would say, uh, I'm kind of what they call a creaster. You know what that is? It's like a CEO, I'm a Christmas and Easter only kind of person. That's when I show up to worship. And you know, or maybe you come every once in a while to church to worship. Would, would, would showing up every once in a while to place your worth and value and, and to worship someone, would that, would that be true worship? Of course not. I mean, think about with your kids. Let's say you told your kids, I'm gonna show up once a year on your birthday to see you, would they feel your worth? Would they feel valued? What if, you, what if you told them, hey, I'll see you a few times a year, but maybe you could just video me in so I could stay at home in my PJs because that's a little more convenient for me. Is that hitting a little too close to home for anybody? It's like, would, would that show them their worth and value? And you know it doesn't because you know that your presence is what they actually need. Your presence is power. You're present with other people right now, and what we've been doing in this service is worshiping God, and there's power in it. There's power in it. What does Jesus want for Christmas? Your worship. John chapter four, verse 23 puts it this way. Jesus says, the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Why does God, why does Jesus want our worship to be primarily and centered on him. Like, does he have that big of an ego? Does God, have an, does God have an ego problem that he just wants your worship and value to be centered on him? There is no ego in God, none. He is love. And God knows this about you because he created you. He loves you so much to know that if you don't find your worth and value in him, primarily in him alone, you will be left empty. And that's where some of you are today. You feel empty and you wonder why. It's because you've placed your worth and value in the things this world is trying to offer you, not in the God who created you. C.S. Lewis said it this way. He said, God made us. He invented us as a man invents an engine. And God designed the human engine to run on himself. You know, if you put diesel gasoline in an unleaded engine, it will break down every single time. And if you try to fill your life up, value and worth in anything but God, it will always break down. And that's why some of you walk in today and you feel broken. And you haven't made the link that you've placed your worth and value in something other than God. I just want some of you to know that God has you here today to tell you, I miss you. Come back and place your worth and value in me. Why did Jesus come on Christmas? He told us in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, I have come that they, that's us, that they may have life and have it to the full. That God could fill your life up if you just turned to him. And this Christmas, I want you to see the story 
of a man named Matthew in our church that two and a half years ago was sitting exactly where you are today. He was a Christmas and Easter kind of guy. Every once in a while he'd come to worship and he decided to pivot his whole entire life because he realized what he had been chasing wasn't filling him up. And he decided to make Jesus more than just a day in December. I grew up in New York, was born and raised there as uh, a Christian, but someone that didn't attend church regularly. Kind of the faith part still wasn't there up through that point. And I'm like, see, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this and being successful. And one by one, I started really realizing the level of the stress, et cetera. So when we moved to Arizona in 2015, one of the reasons why was so that my wife could go back to school and, and get her master's. And towards the end of uh, the nearly three years of school, my wife decided that she wanted to separate. And we tried that for a short time. And then it was decided to get divorced, which was difficult not only for myself, but my children. And I know it was difficult for my wife at the time. Going to church and God, both were not really in our lives as a family. We went to church on the holidays, typically Christmas and Easter. Definitely was not following Christ or being real in my faith, but still calling myself a Christian. My older daughter, uh, who was five or six at the time, befriended a neighbor who played at CCV Stars and played soccer. McLean invited Michaela to come to be on you know, her soccer team to watch how things went and prayer circles after every practice and the positive messages that were going out really started piquing my interest. And from that point on, it was like a, a, a switch was flipped and we started attending every weekend. For someone that, you know, hardly ever went to church before, and if I looked at, we go on Saturday afternoons, and if someone would have told me like, oh, you're gonna take your Saturday afternoon slash evening and attend church, I, I think it would have been like, well, that's not the type of Christian I am, you know, <laughs> and, and not take it seriously. Now, my week is not the same and not complete if I don't go to my service. Before he started coming to church more consistently and before he got baptized, he was more like angry and he wasn't as close with us. But then once he started coming to church, he seemed to know what he was doing instead of being lost and he seemed to know where to go. He's been seem like he's more balanced in life he likes coaching our soccer team and then also coaching jiu-jitsu. And uh, he's been a great influence in our lives. I've faced a lot of adversity and a lot of trials. Um, my faith is what gets me through every single day, no matter how difficult times are, because they're gonna still continue and I'm in a very difficult period of my life right now but I'm able to face it because of my faith in Him. Everything that happens along the way, I think are things put in front of you where you make a decision and our, our decision is guided either by if we're putting ourselves first or if we're putting God first. And over just the past two and a half years of really being all in, I was starting to realize that and began to truly understand that and believe that. Now I turn around and say, wow, I've, I've been blessed all along. And he was there all along. Such a powerful example of, of one person placing their worth and value in Jesus. And the most powerful part of Matthew's story to me is listening to his two daughters describe their dad as at one point he was, he was angry, he was out of balance, he was lost, and he wasn't as close to us. I just wonder 
If you were honest today, if any of those words would describe you, are, are you lost? Are you angry? Are you anxious? Are you out of balance? If so, Matthew wouldn't just tell you, there are thousands of people here that would tell you this. When you begin to place your worth and value in Jesus, you make him more than just a day in December, everything changes for the better. And so I wanna issue a challenge to you this Christmas. It's a very simple challenge. That as you go into 2024, you would say this, if you want it to be a better year, a different year, if you want your life to change, give Jesus two months of your life. Just make this commitment for January and February, two months, you would say every time I'm in town, I will be at church worshiping. I'll just make that commitment. Now it doesn't have to be CCV, you can go to another church if that's a better fit for you, but just go to a church that preaches Jesus and can pour into you and help you place Jesus more at the center of your life. And if you would do that, I'm telling you, everything changes. And I get it, some of you are skeptical. You're skeptical of either Jesus or maybe the church. And if you are, I just challenge you for two months. It's only two months, just come and see. Just come and see if placing your worth and value in something other than this world doesn't absolutely transform your life in just those two months. Matthew's an example that Jesus isn't just what we want at times. He's, he's really the only thing we need. And you may have chased a lot of different things in this world, but maybe this is the Christmas you decide, I'm gonna start chasing after Jesus. Right now, I think it's very appropriate for us to do what we've been talking about, which is to begin to worship. We're gonna worship here in just a moment. But first, I wanna pray that God would give you the courage to make a life-changing commitment today. Would you pray with me? Father, there's so many of us here today that need change in life. And we think it's gonna come from something else, more money or a relationship or something else. But God, you, you designed us to only find our worth and value truly in you and to be filled up with worshiping you. That's what we're doing right now. And I just pray for, for someone here, a, a marriage, a, a teenager, a child, a, a single adult, for someone that just needs you. Would you give them the bold courage to give to just give you January and February of this next year and to test out to see if you are not faithful and that you won't give them life and life to the full. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. He's a God of all creation. He's been good through all the ages. And push or pull, he never changes. Oh, he never changes. He's the God who moves the mountains. He reconciles the broken heart. We found redemption. We say, glory to the one who holds it all. Glory to the one who saves my soul. To the one who I adore. Praise the Lord. And glory to the one who reigns our high. Glory to the God who saved my
one voice we declare this truth we say sound amazing. Let me introduce myself to you really quick. My name is Travis Brown. I get to serve as a campus pastor here at our Peoria campus, and we hope and pray that this service has been a reminder to every single one of us that the hope that we have in Jesus is not just for this season, but it's for every season. It truly is more than a day in December, and whether you're joining us in the room here or you're in overflow, we have a couple hundred people in overflow, or you're tuning in online, if you are here today, and you find yourself desiring to find a church to call home, we would love to have you be a part of what's going on here at CCV. But know this, if you live in the Phoenix metro area, we actually have 16 campuses located all around the valley, and we would love to see you join us at one of those that's most convenient for you. And January is a great time to join us because we're kicking off a brand new series called I Declare. And this series is designed for every single one of us so that we can make 2024 a great year. You're not gonna wanna miss it. But kids, kids, you got this QR code that's in your Christmas bag, what do you do with that? If you bring that QR code back to any one of our campuses during a weekend service and take it to one of our coffee shops or our cafes and turn it in, we have a special treat for you that you're not gonna wanna miss out on. Last thing before we exit service, hang in there parents, we're almost done, you're doing a great job, okay? I know we're making memories, right? Hey, if you desire to make another memory tonight, we have communion available for every single person. If you go over to building 4000, which is right next to our baptistry on the other side of the pavilion, we have communion set up. We also have pastors that are available that would love to have a conversation with you and pray with you if you desire to do that. 
But on behalf of myself and all of us here at CCV, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you back here next Saturday and Sunday. Thanks for joining us. Merry Christmas, everyone.